The following messages were written by survivors but voiced by safe staff. The outfits you will see were assembled based on the description survivors offered or from the clothes donated by the survivors themselves. I had just resumed working following a heart attack. A stranger entered my home one evening while my family was away. I was outraged but collapsed during the fight. My family feels that they should have protected me somehow, but they are not responsible for what happened. When I tried to report what happened, the school said teachers don't do things like that and sent me back to class. The police told me, a jury of 12 people will never believe you, and that is what rang in my mind for years. Family and friends asked me why I would make it up. I was not believed. It was midnight. I was wearing my favorite red business dress with pantyhose and heels. It was 1978 and life was wonderful. I had just been hired as a journalist for an oil company and hosted my first event. The rapist approached me from behind with a gun to my head in the parking lot of my apartment. He made me disrobe and assaulted me between two parked cars. Another resident pulled in to find a parking space and started yelling at him. The rapist fired the gun several times at me as he escaped into the darkness. Although I reported it to the police, he was never apprehended. The statement of a loved one. Are you sure you didn't provoke him? I was knocked out. I'm not sure how I could have made any kind of move. I'm barely starting to be more open and not carrying the shame on my shoulders. I was at a bar with my friends and my car got towed from the lot. I mistakenly thought it was for the bar. One of the guys I was with offered to drive me to get it, but told me on the way that we were going to his place instead. When we got to his apartment, he said I could sleep in his bed and he would take the couch. After I had fallen asleep, he got into bed with me and started groping me. I woke up and told him to stop. He wouldn't. He grabbed me more tightly and started unbuttoning my shorts. I freaked and started flailing until I hit him and he stopped. I grabbed my purse and ran more than three miles home. My roommate and her boyfriend were my friends, right up until it happened. The shock I experienced after the event was amplified when they worked together to hide what he did from the student body. I had to leave school, citing his retaliation, social excommunication, my depression, and administrative inaction as the causes. I was not the first in my friend group to leave the school for sexual assault, and this was not the first time I have been sexually assaulted. I was wearing a basic, plain, light blue bath towel. I was just walking from my bathroom to my bedroom. My roommate was in her room, and I thought I was safe. I went over to his house. It's been almost eight years. I just told parents this year. I still can't escape the shame I feel. I don't remember what I was wearing or the date. Trauma has taken away chunks of my memory from this time period. I would like to share where I was assaulted, how I was assaulted, how I knew my perpetrator, and for how long, how I reported, and what I was asked, and subsequently, how I was treated by the hospital staff, police, and my North Texas school in the days and weeks following. I would like to disclose that I was under the influence and I am a person with disability. My perpetrator knew. I was pressured not to press charges, and I did not. I voluntarily left my school. I couldn't talk about it for 25 years and have finally found healing through counseling. So many years wasted, unable to trust myself, unable to like myself, unable to find peace, unable to fulfill my potential. He said, if I'd known you were a virgin, I never would have done it because that made a difference, apparently. I was wearing navy blue shorts and a baby blue shirt that had white stripes on it. When I finally built up the courage to speak up, I was asked, why didn't you say anything sooner or in the moment, along with, are you sure you aren't lying and making this up? I was eventually given my options of being able to file a police report, but not before being reminded that my actions had consequences and would tear apart a family. Healing has taken years of therapy that I didn't pursue until just a few years ago, 
It's a process and I'm still healing and still working through it. Freshman year of college, discovering the world around me and most importantly, myself. In the process of recognizing my own wants and needs as an adult woman, I found myself in a position where I could not have it in a way that felt safe for me. An attempt at feeling empowered about my own sexuality struck down by physical, but most importantly, emotional power of a man. I was in trouble for a traffic violation and not appearing in court on time. I was arrested and had to use a bondsman. He took me to his house, which was also his office, to sign paperwork. At some point, he sat behind me, grabbed my arm, and wrestled me to the floor in a police hold. He was 46 years old, 250 pounds. I was 16 and weigh 115 pounds. He raped me, and I froze, praying for it to be over quickly. Afterwards, when I was leaving, he made sure to tell me it wasn't rape. I was so naive, and because I didn't scream and kick and fight, I believed I let it happen. I must have wanted it. I was on a beach vacation with my family. My uncle molested me during the night. His three children were asleep in the same room. When I told my parents, he said I must have been dreaming. How will we ever get you married off now? Well, what did you do to make him be so rough? Things all said by my family or friends after learning I was raped. Sexual assault was a common component of my violent marriage. The man who should have loved me and protected me used our marital bed to play out his violent fantasies for almost 10 years. At the time I divorced in 1986, marital rape was still legal in Texas. A friend's teenage brother woke me up in the middle of the night and exposed his penis to me and asked me to touch it. I was at a sleepover, sleeping in the same bed as his younger sister, my friend. We were eight. I remember being scared, not knowing why he would want me to touch his penis, but also not wanting to wake up my friend. I went to bed that night and blamed it on the cat. I thought I would get in trouble if anyone found out what happened, so I never told anyone, not even my parents. I went to my friend's house party and got drunk. My friend decided to climb on top of me and rape me while I was passed out. Other friends came in and saw what was happening. Nobody stopped him. He gave me flowers afterwards. I guess that made it okay. I was deployed with an all-male unit in Baghdad, Iraq. During my 15 months overseas, I was sexually assaulted three separate times. The first time was when I was using the Porter John. The second time, I was taking a shower, and the final time, another male soldier climbed in through my window while I was asleep. When you're deployed, you can go days without showers, and most of us women's women went months without shaving. We wore our army uniforms 24-7 and never had our hair down or wore makeup. I finally sought healing once I returned and officially became a therapist August of this year to heal others. I was date raped at a party while visiting a friend's lake house on the 4th of July in summer of 2006 in Virginia. I don't remember much because I was very intoxicated. We all were. I remember his name, William, and I remember waking up next day in pain, confused, and unsure what happened. I was so ashamed and made to feel ashamed by my friend's mother for what happened. I'm still healing from it to this day. My first incident, I think, I was hanging out with my older brother and his best friend. He was spending the night at our house that night. He was very trustworthy and very nice, so I felt comfortable around him. We all eventually fell asleep in my brother's room, but late at night, I woke up to my brother's friend touching me. He continued to do so until I decided to move and leave the room. I didn't even acknowledge it happened until I was in seventh grade. I haven't heard told anyone about it, but I do think about that time a lot, and I have panic attacks every once in a while because of it. My eight-year-old daughter was looking for the fatherly love in her stepfather. But in his dirty mind, he decided to take advantage of her search for a father figure. I wasn't aware of this happening because she was threatened and manipulated by him. His threats were of killing my newborn and me, and also would even kill her pets to stay in control. I was walking back home from the bakery with my tres leches, cake, and sweetbread for my dad. I also had a cup of corn in the other hand. 
This guy walked past me and smiled, and then the next thing I remember, I was in a car. I didn't get to my family for a long time. We lived in an area where there was lakes, rivers, and pools, so it was very normal for everyone to be in bathing suits walking around. I thought I heard a cat dying, but then I realized it was me repeatedly saying, No, I told a friend, and she retorted, But then why didn't you scream? I vomited daily for what seemed like forever, but then one day it stopped. Some days I feel like I can't continue living with this burden, but then I remind myself how far I've come. I am a 22-year-old street youth walking the boulevard of Hollywood. I know that it was just after 5 p.m. because the youth drop-in center had just closed. Suddenly, I am bum-rushed by three large men, chloroformed and thrown into a van. When I come to, I am bound to a bed with rope. I am forced to dislocate my wrist in order to escape my bindings. The personnel at the Goodwill I had escaped to nearly called the cops because I was stark naked. I had to explain what happened and they gave me clothes. After, a friend led me to an abandoned building for refuge. I was unable to leave the building for over two months in fear for my life. It's funny, no one has ever asked me that before. They ask me if being raped means I'm gay, or if I fought back, or how I could let this happen to me, but never about my clothes. I was wearing a jean shirt, jeans, and toms. Everyone seems so confused when I tell them this, like they can't understand what I'm saying. They just can't understand what I was wearing. It's almost funny. Almost. I was wearing my lifeguard uniform. She said guys can't be raped. She didn't stop. I had been working out, so Nike shorts and a large t-shirt, I guess. I'm sure I smelled bad. I even remember thinking that thinking about how bad I must smell, because I needed to think about anything but what was happening to me. I was a nurse coordinator for a large pediatric neurology group. I had my dream job. I wore scrubs to work every day. One of my physicians harassed and touched me repeatedly. When I finally reported it to management, I got terminated. I pressed charges. The first thing the other legal team asked me was, what were you wearing? What did you do to entice him? I wore scrubs, not sexy, and I did nothing. I did my job well. I never gave him permission to touch or harass me. I was in high school when I was raped and too afraid to tell anyone until two months later. And when I did, I was too afraid to follow through with the charges. To this day, that's one of my biggest regrets. However, I turned that regret into motivation and am now a sexual assault advocate with SAFE. After what happened, I had to learn that my body is a forest, one that grows back over and over again.